Hello everybody, welcome to my installment of my Freelancer YouTube channel. I'm not sure where this would line up in the curriculum. It's been a topic of discussion for quite a while now. Uh, in this episode we will be discussing Kickstarter. Kickstarter's been around long enough, I don't need to explain what it is, and if you don't know then you have no desire to watch this video anyway. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm uh, getting over something. I've had two successful Kickstarters, uh, I think that's why people come to me with so many questions. Um, I also, if you know me, dispense knowledge whether you want it or not, so I share some of my insight. Uh, some people use it, some people don't. But I'm going to keep it short, keep it brief. I think a lot of this is common knowledge. Maybe it's not common knowledge. I'm approaching 40 years old. Maybe it's bordering on wisdom. Probably not. I'm going to give you some successful examples, some unsuccessful examples, some things to look out for. Finally, I'm going to give you the three P's, and in no particular order, you've got product, pedigree, and your pitch. Without an elegant and polished combination of all three of these things, your Kickstarter is very likely to fail. Of course, some things slip through the cracks, like a 3D printer making millions just to fund somebody building their new house, or somebody making over $10,000 on a cup of chili. Was it chili? Potato salad. But he gave all the money away anyway, so good for him. Hopefully these things can help you, help you along your journey, uh, help you decide whether or not you should or should not do at least a Kickstarter-based fundraising system. Of course, there's other options like GoFundMe, Patreon, uh, and, and a few others, um, or just a PayPal link on your website, or actually selling a product. Anyway, let's keep this short. Let's get into it. Hope you enjoy. Kickstarter has been around since 2009 and has directed $1.9 billion in pledges from 9.4 million backers to fund 257,000 projects from the Pebble smartwatch to the Veronica Mars movie to the failed Ouya video game system, all grossing over $8 million each. Now before you get excited about raising a million dollars for your next mixtape or your graphic novel, let's get into the details. My opinion is built on three pillars. First is pedigree. Pedigree is clout. It's who you are. It's what you've done. How many years have you been at this? These mega successful campaigns are instant successes because of their pedigree. They are either already established figures in their industry or they are already titans. Tim Schafer, founder of Double Fine, has a lifetime of building games for LucasArts and has some of the most recognizable titles in gaming. So when he asked for some money from his fans, he got it. Quickly. Like millions. In a couple days. Okay, so maybe this is an extreme example. For my St. Louis people, let's bring it home. The Book of Da by Matt Bryan and Mike McCubbins smashed their Kickstarter goal of $3,000 with a killer total of $17,324. Now a lot of that money will go into production and shipping, but that's a lot of happy customers. How do they do it? Fans and a killer and effective portfolio. Now the reason I think I can speak from any position of authority is I've had a pair of successful Kickstarters. I've also had a failure. My first one was a real struggle. A Norwegian writer named Frederick Buer contacted me to create a story, which we would tailor together and crowdfund it to get it made. We had a handmade pitch video, pestered everyone we knew, and asked for $10,000 to make a full graphic novel. We failed. We aimed for a smaller, non-moving target of a single issue, rebuilt our campaign, and successfully raised $5,326 of our $4,500 goal. Six months later, everybody had their comic book, and everything about Superluminous faded into obscurity, later to be unearthed by our superfans. Fast forward a few years, and a few fellows and I decided to crank out another. I'd spent those years working and generating a following, so we went for the big boy, the graphic novel. $11,355 and we were on our way. Eight months after that and I was giving my drawing hand ice baths in my landlord IOUs. Making an entire book by yourself is hard. My point is though, is that we had fans, followers, a pedigree. Jim Oosley and Oscar Madrid were accomplished writers and all around charming and fantastic people. I had my own following as well, as I've spent the last five years as a commissioned artist. Without these things, we would have failed, like so, so many others. The next invaluable pillar of success is the product. So many people want others to fund their way of living to create whatever. A trip to China for religious pilgrimage of self-discovery, done. 
But loose guidelines led a lot of Kickstarter patrons to very unhappy investments. Creators would take their money and never deliver. Some were gracious enough to refund people's pledges, but that has to be like 0.0005% of creators. Since then, the guidelines were redesigned to reinforce Kickstarter's position that people are backing projects, not placing orders for a product that already exists. So you better not have created a product and used Kickstarter as an ad campaign to sell pre-orders. But to go more in depth on this, what are you selling? An album? A book? A refrigerator that can order your groceries for you? If you can't answer that because you're just a creative or an entrepreneurial spirit wandering the plains of broken dreams, then get ready for your next failure. Your product has to be a well-polished idea and some of it must be done to show off in your pitch video. Find something people want or need and find a team to create it and reach out to your fans to make it happen. Lastly, we have our pitch video. Hire a filmmaker. That's it. A shaky cam monologue of you asking for money so that your 16 volumes of lore detailing the war of the Cloud Elves versus the army of Magma Knights, but really it's a love story about the Prince of the River Kingdom. Stop. Make a video that shows your product, what you've done, what you aim to create, how you're going to deliver it to them. Also, include the rewards. Surely people just want your product, but stickers, buttons, shirts, original art, unreleased tracks, a limited edition with extra features, something to make them feel special for giving you their money. And make your video great. Look at all the winning examples and don't make anything I less. I want to build a universe. I want to build a game I always wanted to build, but I didn't have the tools to do until now. One that you can fly off a carrier fighting a heroic war on the front lines, but also one that you can muster out and find your own fortune in the stars wherever your spaceship takes you. do it or can't afford it, wait, get some money together, do it right. And finally, get ready for the next 30 days of your life to be absolute hell. You have to spam your friends, your Facebook wall, industry Twitter people and blogs, go on your local news, throw a launch party, events. 30 days of marketing and selling your Kickstarter is just as important as your pitch and the actual other two pillars. the. Um, uh, the pedigree and the, uh, the, pro the products, yeah, those. Your campaign will be a relentless, ravenous hunt for getting attention and getting your product in front of people. If you have all of these three, you might have a chance. If you already have a following, you have a well-designed and thought-out product with advanced material to show off. and you have a well-produced pitch video worth watching, you just might make it. But then again, you probably already know if you've got the fan base to successfully raise money. If you don't, you might need a few more years on that grind. That's it guys, thank you so much. Again, I wanted to keep it short, keep it brief. A lot of this stuff should be common knowledge if you're trying to get into this uh, crowdfunding entrepreneurial avenue. Uh, if you like this kind of video, um, like, subscribe, share it. Uh, I've got a Patreon, which I will be, you know, linking somewhere in here if I can figure out how to annotate. If not, check below for the comments. Um, I'll have other videos coming up soon about how to manage your time as an illustrator or as uh, uh, any sort of creative freelance endeavor. And uh, again, thanks for joining me. You like my studio? Pretty cool, right? <laughs> <laughs>